what is leadership for you or how, how do you define leadership <laughs> okay so um i gave you know i've been thinking about this quite a bit you know and i think the simple answer to this is um i believe leadership is about sincerity about authenticity and about transparency uh, but the thing is that that sometimes prevent presents certain challenges right because if you don't have the right sense of purpose and you are <laughs> you're being sincere and authentic and transparency of not being having the right sense of purpose then you're in deep shit, right so i think that has to start right you have to do be do, doing this for the right reasons and the, and you have to write intentions uh, uh and uh, you know throughout my corporate life i've seen a lot of leaders who fail because and i think they, they, they might succeed in the short term in the long term they feel is because they have a very personal agenda uh they look after themselves they don't care about anybody else and i think when that happens i think it's quite hard to to become a good leader uh, and then also, I believe about being a leader, apart from sincerity, authenticity, and all that, also about empathy. I think empathy is very, very important. And you need to understand the people and feel for the people that you're working with. And I have to be very careful because a lot of people um, identify empathy with sympathy. And uh, there's nothing further from the truth because sympathy will actually lead you down the wrong path. You know, and uh, and I think that you know uh, many people who work for me and continue to still work for me will say that I'm not an easy leader. You know, uh, <laughs> and you know, sometimes you have to practice what I call tough love, and you have to be cruel to be kind. You know, and you need you mm -hmm. need to know how to exercise that and be clear the reason why you are being tough. You know, uh, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want people to succeed. Uh, it's not because you want to belittle anyone. You know. <laughs> So what do you believe is the role of leadership and transformation in thriving in the next normal? Having said well, all those you've shared earlier. <laughs> yeah, I think basically what I said about what leadership should be about and what is going to be important going forward um, is that, you know, we need to now rethink, keep rethinking. Um, I mean, this thing about the hackathon too, right? Murder on the Orient Express, Express. we've got to figure out how we could die as a business so that we can understand how we can avoid <laughs> avoid dying right so so we, we think about we think about that all the time you know even though we are really ahead of the curve uh by by so much right and uh, even then i think people will catch up at some point i mean you know the world is not so stupid right so so other other companies will catch up and we are still a tiny little business it's so easy to snuff us out uh one of once these big big multinational get it and start to do something and throw hundreds of millions of dollars at it they will create something that can just kill us uh, overnight right um and then at the end of it if i can just add about as a leader um as, as a leader i think the important the other th uh, the other characteristic i think we i need to add here is vulnerability and i think it's important for the leader to come across as vulnerable and and the reason for that is that you want your people to also think and come up with ideas right if you are positioning yourself as the mr know all the only voice of authority i only make all the decisions in this company um then nobody is going to think for you so i very often says guys i'm at a loss i don't know what to do you know i tried so hard it's failed you know uh, this customer i've been chasing for the last year is still won't <laughs> still won't sign up with us you know and um and sometimes lose your cool lose your temper lose your i mean we're all humans right why, why do you, why do i want to hide this right and uh, as, as as like i said earlier as long as the purpose is there everybody understands and trusts the purpose then you can behave i think a little bit more let your gut down and i think when you let your gut down people hopefully will then come in and contribute uh and that's to me the most important thing because it's so much to do if your people are not you know having giving the ideas and come up with coming up with solutions uh it's very hard to do this mm -hmm. what do you believe will be the important um you know leadership capabilities or, sk or skills that leaders must have in the next normal to be able to continue to lead effectively mm. 
Okay, so actually the answer is quite simple. I mean, everybody has talked about this. It's a matter of whether they know how to implement it, implement it or not, you know. Uh, the answer is basically three things, agility, creativity, and innovation. <laughs> so, you know, the new norm, you have to know how to pivot, agility, you need how to change things you do, and we are doing that all the time, and we've been doing that from since the beginning, right? Because we are in spaces, in our business, you're doing things which other companies, nobody has done before, right? So to be able to to be agile and to, and to be able to change track with things uh, is actually very, very quickly important, and I always have very tough discussions with my with my colleagues and i tell them that if you're the kind of person who says what is my job description <laughs> then you're in the wrong place <laughs> your job description changes every day you know uh, or could change every day and and you know if i were to start writing job descriptions then my whole life will be just writing job descriptions because they change all the time you know so so we will go into a different types of business we will we will you will we will change that the offerings from our customers and i mean you know in the course of last year we have one customer who went from one key of one piece of business with us went up to three different pieces of business with us can you imagine that so which means that we did two other things for our customers which have never done before <laughs> one of them was we started by providing e them e-learning since the last 10 years and then last year, uh, what they did was that they wanted to outsource their um, marketing communications to us. Mm -hmm. And so we took on the whole, you know, so the intranet, their internal newsletter, their website, everything is managed by us. It's something that we never oh. done for another company before, right? And then the next thing was they wanted us to run a huge number of webinars for them because they have an onboarding program. It's quite a big company. They're operating in nine countries, a few thousand employees. And they wanted to roll out this uh, this kind of uh, company orientation program, which is actually, um, I think it's a three-week program if it is run in the classroom. And they want to run this for 1,000 employees in nine countries. But with COVID-19, they cannot do it. So we had to run webinars and set up. So in the course of one year, which we, we're still in the first few months of the project, we have to run more than 1,000 webinars each of four hours long with this client. And imagine, I mean, it's damn good business for us, right? <laughs> but exactly. then it's new business which we have never done before. I mean, we we run webinars, but we never run webinars for clients, right? So, so things like that, and uh, and I, I always tell them that you you have to cannot you cannot complain that you know there's so much chaos, everything is changing every day. We might do something, and then we find it's not good. We drop it. We do something else. And I discovered after a couple of days learning about design thinking, that's what design thinking is about, you know, you just keep prototyping, you know, and then you kind of, you know, uh, 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 and keep changing and dropping and moving on. And I think this kind of um, thing I, I tell my employees, I say, one thing you need to learn is to be able to operate under ambiguity. Who is your boss? don't know i mean you you work with a few people that there's no one person who says do this you know uh, tell you every day what to do you have to be able to work with different uh, department heads who have different uh, perspectives on the project and you know you need to be able to function in that environment so so and for us in management we have to keep innovating ourselves out of this because i had this discussion with my entire team i think it was in march last year i said look what does a generation ex exist? We are online learning, remote work company, and um, we hire people with disabilities and other marginalized communities, right? That is our secret, right? I said that at that time, I already read a report from one of the reports from McKinsey's that says that with this pandemic, so remote work is going to be the norm. And because remote work is a norm, then companies should actually be hiring more people with disabilities. So I told my, I told my colleagues, I said, you know what? If people follow what McKinsey says, uh, we have lost our secret sauce, right? So our, our, our mission is accomplished. So everybody in, in the world will be doing remote work and hiring people with disabilities and refugees. And then our mission is done. So we have no, we have, first of all, we have no reason to exist as a company. Second thing is that there'll be so much competition. And I told them each, each one of you will probably be offered a salary three times what you're getting, <laughs> right? So then, you know, function. So I said, I think that 
if everybody follows the report from McKinsey, I said two to three years, Janesh team will cease to exist. So now we've got to think now, how do we continue to exist and innovate ourselves out of this? So the blue ocean that we have been uh, swimming in, there's a red tide coming in. So now we've got to look for other blue, bluer parts of the ocean to swim to, right? So I hope that answers your question.